All right. Welcome, everyone. We want to just welcome um, all of our guest speakers today here. And um, I want to thank them for taking their time on a Friday lazy night because it's raining out. And so at least we can't complain that, you know, the weather's nice and we're stuck inside. We don't mind being inside tonight. So I want to thank our guest speakers that are joining us, um, artists in their own right. And I'm going to let them introduce themselves in just a moment and share their accomplishments. And I also want to welcome all of you that are watching us. Um, we have a chat going on. So if you see your chat, um, just let us know where you're uh, watching us from. You can just put the state. We don't need to know the city or, you know, just let us know what state you're watching us from. And if you have, okay, I see Trevor calling in from New Jersey. Thank you for joining us, Trevor. Um, also, if you have any questions, please put, the, put it in the chat because we will do our best to get to the chat questions at the end of our time. Um, we'll have a QA and a and we'll, you know, whatever questions you have for our artists, um, you can, you know, just get your questions in and we'll make sure we get, we get to them. And um, just for everyone to know, we are, broadcasting live. We're from New Jersey. Shabri is here from New Jersey as well. Hello, Shabri. Welcome. Um, and so um, you guys are going to be listening to us. You're going to watch us and see us. We won't get to see you, but just let us know. Show us some love in the chat. Let us know that you're listening. And if there's something that resonates with you, you know, throw us a high five if you're able to do that in the chat. Um, so, for those of us um, that are new to Zoom, thank you for joining us on Zoom. We've just been using Zoom recently because of the pandemic that's going on. Um, so we are so grateful that we have this platform to be able to use this because initially when we were planning this meeting, um, it was going to be an in-person meeting and we were going to do, you know, a round table and have you guys meet with these artists and see them and talk to them one-on-one. -on -one. But since we can't do that, we are doing it here. Um, the next best place is online. So thank you for joining us. Um, my name is Maria Rivera-Jones. I go by MRJ. I am the founder of Second Generation Music. I am a vocal coach. I am a songwriter. And I'm so happy to have connected with these artists because I wanted to have other people that have been in the business, that have been doing music for a long time, that have been in the industry, that have had experience to share their knowledge, share their experiences, share their um, wisdom that they have learned along the way. And so I am so delighted that I have three amazing artists right here from New Jersey in the Bergen County, Passaic County area. And we're so delighted to have them. Um, so thank you guys for joining us tonight. And um, I'm going to just introduce them and then we're just going to let them begin to share. So first we have Luke. Roland, say hello, Luke. Hey, everybody. Maria, thanks so much for having me. It's great to be here. Thank you. We have Ronnie Kens. Say hello, Ronnie. Hi, everybody. How's it going? <laughs> so and glad for everyone to be here. Thank you for coming out. <laughs> That's right. And hey, Cynthia, how are you? I see Cynthia in the chat. And we also have Danasia, the songbird. I don't know if you guys that, um, saw some of my posts, Hi, heard her sing. Now I need posts from my other two artists. We need to feature you guys. We want to have your song um, <laughs> posted on my page as well. But, but Danasia, say hello to our friends. Hi, guys. Welcome. Thanks for having me. I'm excited to be here with you guys virtually. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you. All right. So I'm going to let um, each one and I'm going to start with Luke because I see him first on my panel here. So Luke, 
tell us a little bit about yourself, your background, how long you've been doing music, when did you uh, start? Yeah, absolutely. I'll keep it. Uh, I'll keep it brief. But I um I kind of started my music journey at a very young age, uh, probably since I could walk. Basically, my parents put me in in choirs and through through church growing up, um, and I, I started my instrumental training at a pretty young age as well. I think I was six or seven when I started uh, training on the piano, and then guitar after that, and vocal uh, vocal training growing up as well. And I think it was really. Um, I guess middle school, early high school, when I started uh, songwriting for the first time, I think I, I can trace my uh, songwriting roots back to third grade. Um, the first time I ever started writing poetry, I wrote this poem for a, a literary contest and I ended up winning that at my school. And I think that kind of just sparked my love for creative word using and just trying to communicate um, through words. And then uh, I think just over the years, um, my, my love for, for songwriting has just kind of deepened and become such a huge part of my life. Um, I lived in Ohio for a few years. I played with a, a bunch of bands out there with different genres. Um, and I've been back here in New Jersey uh, for a few years now. And I right now am uh, working at a church. So I've been in, I've been involved in uh, sacred music all growing up. I, I work in the city, but then kind of on the side, I work at a church as well. So, um, you know, running, helping run music there and write sacred music is also a big part of my life. Um, so yeah, I guess I can, uh, can leave it there. Um, I think the, you know, songwriting, it's, it's been a, it's been a lot of fun and performance has been a lot of fun, but it's also been kind of a, uh, a necessary and deep part of my soul, if that makes sense, kind of just using creativity, using songwriting and music to uh, just connect with um, the world around me, try to connect with, with my life experiences and, uh, and, and play that out through music. Um, so yeah. That's awesome. Um, so you started pretty young, you said, with, your, with writing songs. Did you, were, were you a lyric writer? Were you a melody writer? I started as a lyric and melody writer for sure. Um, my my instrumental training was always behind my my vocal and and lyric training. Um, so from a young age, I think I I got really uh, into lyric writing, and I think even today it's probably my my strong suit. Um, but then as my you know music theory knowledge has uh, developed over the years, um, kind of being able to mesh those two and you obviously speak through lyrics, but also speak through um, you know, the melodies you're crafting speak through the, the types of songs you're writing. Awesome. Awesome. So we're gonna, we're gonna pause you right there. And then we'll come back and ask a couple more questions. I'm gonna have Danasia, um just share a little bit about yourself. Let us know who you are, what you've done, all your great accomplishments. <laughs> okay. Hi, guys. Um, I'm Danasia. I go by the songbird is my stage name. Um, I'm from Patterson. Um, I've been in a couple of contests. I performed at the Apollo Theater in Harlem. Um, my first time performing there actually was when I was around seven or eight back in like 1997. Um, and I went back recently in 2019. So, um, you know, that was pretty fun just to actually experience it as an adult um, and actually cherish, you know, such a his historic moment uh, for myself. Um, what else? I started singing in church. Um, both of my parents sing. So, that's kind of how I started singing, I guess. I don't know. Um, but it kind of just came naturally. Um, I've actually never had any type of vocal training or anything like that. Um, but I'm looking, you know, to get into that soon, hopefully, um, just to enhance my craft. Um, but yeah, just singing in church, grew up singing in church. Um, I did different talent shows. Um, and then in college, that's when I really started getting back into music. Uh, believe it or not, during high school, I actually didn't sing at all. Um, so a lot of my friends that I went to high school with actually didn't even know I sang until we graduated, which they thought was mind blowing. Um, but yeah, college, I was in the uh, choir um, at my school. So I sang there at Syracuse University. Um, what else have I done? Uh, oh, it's 2016, I um, participated and won Steve Harvey's Neighborhood Awards. He had a singing competition. Um, so they flew us out to Vegas, and I actually was the winner there. Um, and since 
he hasn't had another one. So I like to say that I'm the reigning champ uh, from 2016 <laughs> uh, until somebody takes my spot, you know. Um, but yeah, that's a little bit about me. That's awesome. Um, so going into that contest, how did it feel to win the contest? Like, I'm sure you must have um, had lots of nerves. I did. Uh, so going into it, it was actually like the process of it. It started um, literally from we had to submit a YouTube video. And then from there, they called us and we had to actually perform live on the radio. Um, so at the time, I was actually a grad student um, in Miami. And so I'm like getting ready to go to class but I'm on the phone like with the radio station and then I'm driving to class and I'm singing in the car and then I get off the phone and then I'm going to class. Um, and so when I actually like won, it was a lot of shock. Um, they had a video of like the announcement when they said my name and I literally fell to the ground. Like it was just like, what? Like, I can't believe I won, you know, started from the radio, came all the way here in front of 12,000 people. Like it was crazy. Um, it was a great feeling though. I felt great sometimes I think about it and I still cry like what <laughs> but it was a good experience and you also got to sing the national anthem for I an did. NBA oh, game like that. yeah <laughs> um that was actually the same year so um the contest was in July and then I sang the national anthem in October um so I actually used to work there part-time and so that's kind of how I like got in I guess um, mm -hmm. So my manager actually directed me to the talent scout manager. Um, and so I had to submit like an audition tape and I sung it. Um, and that was a good experience. I got a lot of, uh, I guess you want to say backlash, I don't know, uh, mm. for it, uh, for different reasons, which I can talk about later. But um, that was a cool experience too. Awesome. Awesome. Well, thank you for sharing that. That is okay. so awesome. And we're so proud of all the work that you've done and Luke has done. Thank you. And um, okay, Ronnie, tell us about yourself. Sure. Hey, everybody. Once again, I'm Veronica McKenzie, aka Ronnie Kins, short for Ronnie, whatever you like to call me. Um, I would say the my main accomplishments um throughout my journey of the music industry i can go all the way back to without giving my age <laughs> i can take you back to my younger years um grade school in particular i started off writing poetry just like luke um that's what i really was focused on believe it or not then i started dancing um i didn't start singing until about sixth, seventh grade, I didn't realize that I had a voice until people said, man, you can sing. And I had to question myself at that time because I never thought that I had a voice. And all of a sudden I started singing more and more. I ended up doing the, um, the Star Spangled Banner, seeing the Star Spangled Banner. I performed at my eighth, eighth grade school graduation. Never forget greatest love of all. <laughs> um, I went on to high school, uh, started performing in all shows there. I was also part of the Institute, um, which I love that school, by the way. Um, I participate in every show there was for all my four years. I studied in art. So basically I would say I'm pretty artsy, um, very creative in that aspect. Anything that involved music, acting, uh, dancing, I was definitely part of, and I really enjoyed doing that. Um, I would say one of my biggest, biggest accomplishments came at a time when I, I pretty much gave up on music. Um, I got a call from, <laughs> I want to give a big shout out to Darren Lighty. He's one of the top musicians, producers ever, um, produced a lot of different um, songs for a lot of people in the industry. And I was just one of those, oh, God. oh no. We see you, we hear you. So, oh, you do? Oh my God, I'm in panic. Yeah, okay, there he is. yeah. <laughs> okay, so um, you see me? Yes. yes. Do you see me? Okay, thank yep. you. Okay. So um, I would say, again, my biggest accomplish accomplishment was um, back in 1999, where I got a call from Darren Lighty, um, who wanted me to participate on a song um, sang by Donnell Jones. 
And I didn't know who Donnell Jones was at that time, but I began to, you know, get familiar with his music. I went to the studio that same night, wrote the hook. And the very next day I was at Warner Chapel filling out paperwork as a songwriter. And um, I didn't realize how big it was until I saw my first track. And I'm like, I'm rich. I am so rich right now. <laughs> I'm super rich. Um, so I would say that was my biggest accomplishment. Um, I've also participated in Hal Jackson Talented Teens pageant back uh, when I was a teenager. The first year I, I um, participated, I ended up winning the crown. And it was just, you know, it was just an amazing, amazing experience. Um, so I just say to anybody, if it's something that you're passionate about, keep doing it because just when you're about to give up, that's when things really start to happen for you. Awesome. Um, so Ronnie, so we're going to start the round of questions here. Um, okay. So how, how did you get picked? Here we go. Can you see? Now there, I can see you. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> We, yeah, we saw you and we heard you. Well, um, okay, great. everybody did. So, um, so you got this opportunity to write a hook for a major artist. Like, how did, how did you make that yes. connection? How did, tell us, walk us through that process. Like, how you got that? Well, basically, after I won Hal Jackson Talented Teens pageant when I was 17, um, I was working with a guy named Martin Smith, who also knew that producer, D Darren Lighty. And everybody was just calling, trying to figure out who I was signed to, um, was I available to record with them. And that's pretty much how the connection kind of like came together. And um, it was just amazing. I just kept, you know, the friendship with Darren Lighty. I would definitely give you a call and he stuck to his word and that's why I am forever indebted <laughs> to him because he could have called someone else um but he you know he called, contacted me and um it was just amazing and I ended up at the Rhythm and Soul Music Awards um I accepted that award it was just a star-studded event <laughs> and you know it's just amazing when you get called for something that you participated in that stayed on the billboard or charts for eight weeks. So that in itself was an accomplishment for me. Yes, and thank you for mentioning that because I don't think anyone really knew that, that <laughs> the song, the hook that you wrote made it to number one on the Billboard charts. Eight weeks, it That's was amazing, huge. amazing, <laughs> amazing. <laughs> that is huge. Yes. So yes. to get to that place, what, what were you doing before that? right? Because oppor when opportunity presents itself, you have right. to be already prepared. So what Absolutely. were you doing beforehand? Let me tell you, I, I'm a workaholic. I've always had a job. Um, I'll never forget, I was getting off from work. It was around 4.30, 5 o'clock. Um, I get the call from Darren Lighty, and he asked me, what are you doing like now? And I'll never forget, I was starving, I was tired, I was hungry. But I, I said to myself, he usually don't call me asking me what I'm doing. So I know this is a serious phone call. So I just said, no, I'm not doing anything. So he says, okay, I need to pick you up and I'll take you to the studio. So in that night, <laughs> Um, when he took me back to his home studio, um, first of all, I ended up recording the vocals to another hit song that I participated on. Didn't realize that I was going to be on two hit songs in the same year. So it just ended up happening that way. Um, so I ended up going to a second studio at 10 30, 11 o'clock that night in Closter, New Jersey. Uh, big shout out to Eddie F. He's another major uh, producer. Um, I went there and he just says, look, we need someone to write the hook to this song for Donnell Jones. And I'm like, okay. So I wrote it. Donnell Jones came to the studio. The following day, I sang it for him. He recorded it and he says, this is our hit song. So I didn't realize, again, I didn't realize how big it was really going to be until I heard the song, I got invited and I saw the first check. So I'm like, this is serious. <laughs> This is huge. So um, it was just amazing, to say the least. Amazing. <laughs> awesome. That is so awesome. So we'll come back to you in a moment. Um, Luke, I wanted to uh, talk to you a little okay. bit about um, your, um, your process, because you write your own music, right? Mm -hmm. um, and you started with poetry. So 
um, tell us about the things that inspire you to write. Yeah, so, um, and I hope, I hope we have a bunch of uh, songwriters on here, maybe even young songwriters. Um, I, I think I, I just started at a certain point and I, I look back sometimes at my old songs and they are just terrible. They're the worst things ever. And, uh, and I mean, that's just how it is. Like if you're gonna start songwriting, you're gonna start doing it badly, most likely. Um, but you know, my process really is uh, just trying to consume good art of all kinds. Um, just kind of be, uh, like just have habits of consuming good art. I mean, I, I love good film, I love good uh, literature. So I read a lot of novels and, um, and things. I love going to museums and looking at good, uh, you know, paintings and work of, works of art in that kind of a way. Uh, I, I kind of find myself inspired at the most random moments um, I can't tell you how many times I'll be driving and then when I reach my destination, an idea hits me along the way. So then I just sit in the parking lot, you know, for an hour and flesh out this song. Um, oftentimes lyrics do come to me first. That's just kind of how it is for me. Um, I've talked to a lot of songwriters and sometimes it's, it's the, you know, the guitar hook, it's the piano licks that, that come first and then they, they write lyrics over top um, or just depends on what genre of music you're talking about. Um, to the process looks a little different, but uh, so I, a lot of times we'll start with those those lyrics, and um, my lyrics usually just come from you know me either observing uh, the realities around me and just trying to in a creative, unique way uh, just capture the truth of the human experience as I see it. Um, you know we're all on this on this life journey, and it's crazy that we're all so, so different, but we're all experiencing so many of the same things. We're all experiencing so many of the underneath dynamics, the emotional, spiritual, all these, all these things going on. Um, so just trying to capture little glimpses of that uh, from different angles um, is, how I, is how I write songs. Um, I guess it's, is it from a big picture view? I don't know if we want to get too mechanical, but, uh, but yeah, that's a good question. Awesome. Um, so I don't know if, if anybody that's listening in or if you guys heard, um, but Bill Withers died today or it oh, was announced that he passed it. away. Mm. Yeah. And so he was 81. Um, wow. And uh, he actually had a, a um, uh, what would you say, like um, a life quote, I guess, um, a philosophy about songwriting. And for those that don't know, he wrote, um, you guys know that song, Lovely Day? I'm not going to sing it because it'll distort the sound. Yes, lovely lo day. I just think, uh -huh. Lovely Day. Ain't no sunshine when... Yes, ain't no sunshine. He wrote, ain't no sunshine. Lean on me, lean on me. Lean on me, yes. yes. So an amazing, yeah. amazing mm. songwriter. Um, lived a beautiful long life and he did the same thing to that to to what you're saying luke you know watching and observing and then creating something that can express that right express that to the world so the, these great songs were written but his philosophy was that the hardest thing to do as a songwriter was to take say something in a simple way but mm. having it be profound right having it be yeah. a profound thing so yeah, that's good. I, um, it reminds me of a quote. I think this is Winston Churchill. He, he said, the best communicators are the best simplifiers. Um, I think about that all the time uh, in different ways and in songwriting is certainly uh, very applicable. Mm. Absolutely. Thank you. All right, Danesha, tell us a little bit about what inspires you, um, either musically, yeah. singing wise, writing wise. What are some of your inspirations? Um, so I like, I love old school music. Um, it's funny because me and Ronnie actually had this conversation like last week. Um, I like old school music, like 80s and 90s and funk and everything like that. So that's a, the type of music I like to listen to a lot. Um, but I like to, when I'm creative, I like to, um, you know, try to think of ways to make music stick. Um, you know, music is very universal. It brings us all together clearly, you know, music has brought us together literally right now um mm -hmm. so i like to i like to create things that you know are going to stick that that people are going to remember not just something that they'll remember monday and then by friday it's like 
you know, what was that? Um, so usually when I do try to write, I um, try to listen to stuff like that first. Um, so I'll have a whole playlist and I'll listen to that. Um, or I'll go like while I'm running, um, like Luke said, things will come to me randomly. Um, so like the other day I was running and like an idea popped in my head. And as soon as I got back, I just wrote it down before I forgot. Um, so a lot of times things come to me random. I'm always singing, literally I sing everything. So I could be cooking and I'm using olive oil and I'm singing about olive oil, like literally. <laughs> so <laughs> um, usually things just come to me randomly. Um, but also when I write, I try to connect with the music um, because music is supposed to connect with all. So I usually try to just write from experience, um, you know, things that I've been through that, you know, I know someone else may have been through and just kind of thinking how would, you know, someone else describe this feeling or how would someone else describe this experience? So just trying to make it universal. Awesome. Thank you for that. Um, Ronnie, tell us a little bit about what inspires you when you're, when you're writing. Um, I would have to say the production. The production is what always inspires me for the most part. Um, I notice, like if I were to get 20 pieces of production, I can go through 20 of those pieces and only hear one that really resonates. And I'll stick with that one and I'll just start writing. And then I'll just keep writing until the song is done, which usually doesn't take me long at all to complete a song. Um, and other times, I'm just, you know, as what Denisha was saying, um, it, ideas just come to me no matter where I am. I can be in a room, I can be sitting in a car, I can hear another melody on the radio and I just hear something totally different um, and I just jot it down or I record it on my phone recorder. And I have so many voice notes right now <laughs> of ideas that I'm just waiting to get the right piece of production for. Um, so basically any and everything really inspires me. I can be in a quiet spot. I can be, you know, just relaxing and then something just hits me. I can literally be in a dream and hear a certain melody that I get out of the dream, wake up in the wee hours and find my notepad and jot it down real quick or my phone. Um, I've done that several times. Um, so basically, um, just anything can, can just spark that, uh, creative, aspect uh, for me so yeah just anything really <laughs> that's awesome um how how has this uh situation that we're all in this global pandemic um is it causing you to turn to creativity to deal with the emotions that are with going on with that um are you writing more are you are you not yet writing because you're not sure what to write? So I'm going to start with Luke and, and let's, let's hear what you have to say. Yeah. So I think my, my creativity has, has shifted a little bit with the, uh, with the isolation, with the, you know, distancing. I, I think I've been more in a technical zone in the last few weeks. So I've been do, doing a lot of instrumental practice, um, kind of getting down to it on the guitar a little bit. Um, I actually bought a bunch of uh, new recording equipment right before all this was happening. I kind of saw everything. I'm like, oh boy, we're going to be stuck inside for a while. So I just bought a bunch of stuff and <laughs> I've been uh, been learning some new things with with uh, the technical side, um, studio side. But, I, um, but I'm looking forward to it as it gets warmer. I, I'm always inspired by the outdoors and just taking walks and taking drives and that kind of thing. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to get the creative juices flowing. Um, what about the rest of you guys? Yeah, let's hear from uh, Denasia. Yeah, um, so actually this is like forcing me to write. Um, because a lot of times I'll start a so I have first of all I have like six notebooks just all over my room. Um, and then I have different pages with like a verse here, and then there's a chorus here, and then there's something else here. So I have a lot of pieces of songs, but not completed songs. Um, and oftentimes when I start writing, sometimes I'll get frustrated because I don't like the creative juices aren't flowing. So I feel like I'm forcing it. So I'll take a break from it. Um, but this is literally forcing me to like stick with that because I don't have an excuse. I don't have to go to work. You know, I'm literally stuck in the house. So it's kind of forcing me to finish what I started. Um, so yeah, trying to find some creative juices. I've gotten a little lazy because I've just been home for like three, four weeks now. But um, it's definitely bringing out more uh, of my creative I appreciate it for the most part. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we we 
you know, we can all say that maybe before this all started, like we had no mm -hmm. time, right? We're going from mm -hmm. here to there, there to there. And now yeah. that you have time, you got to really manage that time well, because otherwise, yeah. You know, it's wasted yeah. time. We're going to go yeah, back to the reality in, in no right. time. And music, I know music for me is helping me, like, you know, sometimes just get through the days. Like, when I'm tired of watching Netflix, I can literally turn on music and just listen for three hours. Um, so I just try to keep that in my head. And I'm just like, use this time, you know, to be as, as creative as possible. I always say I want free time to really focus on this. And now I got it. So, you know, got to use the time wisely to be productive. So. Yeah. So what about you, Ronnie? Share some thoughts. It's all fair. Oh, yes. you. There you go. Yes, yes. <laughs> Let me tell you, since we've been on quarantine, I've started writing two proposals. <laughs> I've been writing uh, films. I've been writing songs. Um, and I'll tell you one thing, when I was in, when I was on Instagram, it's a guy, and I know you know who this person is, Danasia, and you may also know Luke. Um, I was on Instagram, um, there was a challenge, a songwriting challenge by a guy named Breland. Do you follow Breland, Danasia? He's awesome. He's just an awesome singer songwriter. Um, and I, I was listening to him and I'm like, he is so talented. So the challenge was, you know, I need the verses to my hook. And I was reading where everybody was like, I'm going to work on this. You know, I'll get it back to you tomorrow or whatever. And then I did it right then and there. I, I wrote the verses, sent it back in like 10, 15 minutes. And I said, please look at my verses. I'm the winner right here. <laughs> so, I mean, this quarantine is uh, causing me to react much faster now when it comes to um, writing. Um, my focus has definitely been, uh, I've been more focused. That is very focused right now. And it's allowing me, this time is allowing me to do a lot more things that normally I would not have been had I been, you know, working or doing other things. So um, I'm definitely utilizing this downtime. Awesome. So I, I hadn't heard about this challenge, but I did hear about um, John Bon Jovi, also a New Jersey native. And his, his challenge was do what you can. So he wrote this like um, melody on his guitar. And I, I don't know if he wrote the hook or if somebody sent him the hook, but he has it out on Instagram and anybody can send him a verse. And then I think he wrote the hook because the hook was pretty good. So I think he was asking people to write the verse. And so he gets on Instagram every, every day and he just shares different verses that people are sending to him. So it's like this, even though we're in a terrible situation, we actually have such a great opportunity to just really dive into our, you know, just getting better, getting better and making the most of this time. Any other challenges that you guys have heard of that are new from um, just? Yeah, well, not, not so much like songwriting, um, but there's just, uh, I know there was a, um, like Tyler Perry started a, he's got the whole world challenge. Um, I follow a few music pages, so they've been doing um, like Harmony Challenge, uh, Brandy Challenge, like just different challenges and people, you know, sing. And then you see people that play, that don't sing, but they play instruments. So then they'll play their instruments, you know, behind the video singing. So it's, it's a lot of challenges going on. I can't keep up right now because there's <laughs> just so many. I feel like every time I like look on Instagram, there's a new challenge. But um, yeah, there is. I do think it's, it's beneficial because it is, you know, bringing people together. And although, like you said, we are in a terrible time right now. Um, music is actually helping us through, so mm. it's great. Awesome. Do you have anything else to share, Luke? No, same thing. I'm seeing all these challenges. I I, uh, I was following the hashtag live from home. Um, a bunch of artists have been posting on that hashtag just with live performances uh, from home. I mean, I, even like today, I was supposed to be at a, a Noah Gunderson concert. I bought the tickets, you know, forever ago, and they they're moving all the concerts, of course. Uh, from uh, their dates here in the spring, but no, it's great just to have, you know, big name artists and then, um, you know, artists that don't, you know, aren't playing uh, thousand person rooms, just everybody performing from home and putting it up there is great. 
Awesome. So um, I want to transition a little bit into collaboration um, because, you know, the industry trend right now is that you have anywhere between five to 10 people to more on, on a song. You collaborate and you write songs with other people. And so, um, but the flip side to that now is that everybody is social distancing so you can't get into a room together and write anymore um and recently there was an article um that Pooh bear uh who for those that don't know who he is he writes he co-writes with justin bieber a lot of his songs and he was saying that most people are probably going to transition from doing collaborations to being solo writers because you really can't get in the room with people anymore. Mm -hmm. um, and being in the room now means being on FaceTime or on Zoom um, or Google Hangouts. And so trying to write a song in that kind of a setting is a little bit more challenging because you have the audio issues, you have feedback. So, you know, you have a producer that's trying to play something, but when you hear it on your end, it's a little bit distorted because it doesn't come through all the way. So, um, first of all, for you guys, have you guys been in collaborations? What was that like? And what do you, how do you see collaborating, collaboration moving forward in this, in this era now? Uh, we'll start with Ronnie. I think, I think her video is a little bit frozen. Danasia, why don't you jump in? <laughs> sure. Um, yeah, I've done some um, collaborations and, you know, that range from literally like my cousin and I, we released a song um, last year of hers and we literally sat and we wrote it in the car, like on our way to um, Brooklyn. So, um, you know, I've done collaborations like that. I've had collaborations like in an actual studio setting. Um, and I will say that process is, kind of special because in the actual room you can feed off of you know everybody's energy yeah. um so i think that that makes the process a little bit easier when you're collaborating um but right now you kind of just have to like fend for yourself type of thing so i think it's again forcing you know people to you know be comfortable with just your ideas because i can send it to you but like you said when you hear it it may be distorted for whatever reason um but it's funny, like yesterday, I, there's an app, I don't know if you guys are familiar, but there's an app that just came out called Voicey. Um, mm -hmm. And so different producers, you know, they, excuse me, submit their beats up there and you, you know, you can sing to it with auto tune and everything. So everybody's a singer now um, during quarantine. Um, but on there, I've actually, you know, found a couple of loops that I like and actually reached out to the producers and they've actually sent me the beat, um, the entire beat. So I've been like, you know, doing that and writing and, I had some lyrics for one of the beats I heard um, on there from the producer, but I couldn't like kind of get to the next step. So what I did was record what I was hearing um, and what I came up with and sent it to someone, but literally like gave them all the details, you know, like from this is what I hear in the background right here at this point, um, just to kind of still create that atmosphere. Like we're together. So, you know, what I'm hearing or what I'm thinking, um, but it can be a little challenging. Um, you know, because I may not describe it through text message in a way that I, someone be able to, you know, pick up off that energy if we were in the same room. So, awesome. And I see that Nicole in the sh chat room put in that she's seen a few group group songwriting sessions on IG live mm -hmm. since the shutdown. So that mm -hmm. I mean, people are staying creative. Yeah. Yeah. So, right. People have to find a way to really stay. helping. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah. I'm gonna um, I'm gonna launch a poll real quickly, and um, let's see. This is to uh, I want I want to see how people are keeping themselves creative during this time. So if you can answer that poll, uh, oh, let me just share the results from the last poll. So we I was asking what what stage um, the persons that are attending what stage are they in and. It looks like 45% of you guys are saying that you are an inspiring artist to cover songs on social media. So awesome. You're staying mm -hmm. creative that way. So that's, that's pretty good. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so Luke, um, 
Well, how has your collaborations been in the past? How do you see it moving yeah. forward? Um, I think the biggest thing for me has just been chemistry. Like, there's nothing wrong with not having chemistry with certain uh, other songwriters. I think there has to kind of be that that flow between you guys if you're going to have a good productive, uh, you know, co-writing session or co-writing experience on a song. Um, so I've been with or I've tried to co-write with some people or have, and it's just been kind of an awkward process. Um, but, but then there's been others where it just completely meshes and flows and then songs just, just come so easily. Um, and it's so much more fun too. Uh, so, you know, so I think just finding the people that you, you drive with when it comes to the process. Um, but as far as it goes in this, uh, you know, Corona time, um, yeah, it, it's hard. It's hard to do it over, let's say Skype or FaceTime or the phone because of the latency, like the, the delays with, um, you know, if two people have their guitars out trying to play or even, um, you know, communicate, uh, melodies and things, it can be a little hard, but I, I found, I found it most uh, successful so far to just, you know, record tracks and share them back and forth. Um, so even if it's just on a voice memo on your phone, Phone, that microphone is going to pick up way better than trying to, you know, go through FaceTime and worry about latency issues and all that. So that's been my um, my method so far. But hopefully we don't have to do this for too much longer. <laughs> yeah, looking forward to getting back to normal. Oh yeah, tell me about it. <laughs> at least at least through May, I'm hearing May yeah. is like when they may lift off restrictions, but. Um, Roddy, talk to us a little bit about your experience doing collaborations. Okay, so sorry about that. Technical issues. That could be another reason why people don't want to do it online. But um, yeah, I love collaborations. I've always done it ever since I was a teenager. I've always been in the studio with different people, different artists, writers, um, producers alike. Um, I think a lot of good can come out of it um, based on different perspectives, different approaches, different writing techniques, different styles. Um, I, I remember being told, even when I worked on the Donnell Jones project, um, the first time when I wrote the hook, it was pretty lengthy. And I remember Eddie F said to me, you know, he just looked at me. He says, mm, that's the closest that I've heard it but can you shorten it? He was like, the whole idea to a hit song is not to have it so lengthy. Um, I want you to cut in half. And I'm like, okay. So I did just that and it became a number one song. So simplicity is everything. Simplicity is everything when you're writing a song. It doesn't have to be, I mean, to tell a story, that's one thing, that's a great thing. Um, but it really depends on the genre of music you're doing, the whole uh, mm -hmm. approach that they're doing at that time. See, at that time for Donnell Jones, there was a certain type of sound that they were going for. And they wanted something that was very cool, very um, relatable, but to the point. So I, I kept that in mind. And I still, to this day, write like that to this day. I still keep it very simple. Um, with the exception of if it's a ballad, then I'm a little bit more intense with the words and the lyrics. Um, but simplicity, I would say simplicity and collaboration is a great thing. Mm. Um, and to follow up with that, when you're writing, right, when you're, you know what the concept is and you're, you're having to come up with the lyric to match that concept, what are you doing to prepare your mind, your heart, to connect with that? How are you preparing for that? Well, let me tell you, Maria, um, when I first heard the track, I'll never forget it because I used to always work with different producers and they would send me production to write to. And then I would go to the studio the next day and then I'll send it back to them via MP3. Um, but when I first heard this track, the first thing I said when he let me hear it was, I want to write to it. Can that track be for me? And when he told me, no, it's taken, I'm like, crap, I know it's a hit track. And surprisingly, it was a hit track. So, I mean, when you're a songwriter, you kind of like have an idea as to what sounds good and what's really going to hit or not. Um, and it's just, it's just a feeling that you have when you hear certain songs, you're like, oh man, for the first time when you hear a certain song, you're like, oh my God, this song is so good. 
and then you keep hearing it and then it's it becomes like one of the biggest songs you know of the time so when you're really involved in the writing um uh aspect and the creativity part of it you know you have a feel of it and it's a certain sound and certain melodies are being used for that sound like Taylor Swift I am a huge Taylor Swift fan um it's just she has this sound this gullible sound this vulnerable sound that is just like hitting I love it I love her voice Demi Lovato, Rihanna, you have Bruno Mars, all these different people, they have a certain sound that is so catchy, you want something catchy, you want something relatable, and you want something that's melodic, and to the point. So those are the songs that usually hit first go around. First awesome. Go around. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. So Cynthia is saying in the chat, yes, she loves Taylor Swift too. And, you know, Taylor has managed to you know, uh, change herself, right? She went from a country artist Evolving. to a huge, yeah. a huge pop artist. And so, yeah, that's so important for us as songwriters to be able to transition between genres. Um, speaking of that, I want to um, move into transparency in lyrics. So sometimes the most honest songs are the songs that people relate to the most, right? Because they can identify with it. Um, and so tell me, um, how do you guys feel about being honest and being raw, talking about the things that maybe you don't want to talk about, but you have to, you have to get it out of your system, right? So Luke, mm -hmm. have you had moments when you've written songs like that before? Yeah, I mean, I, I tried for all my songs to be kind of like that in a way. I mean, I think you have to walk a line sometimes being overly raw just for its own sake can be not very effective when it comes to music. But um, I mean, I, I think art and creativity in general is the best path toward, you know, um, communicating truth. Um, you know, cause when we're, when we're writing a song, when we're trying to communicate something about the human experience, um, sometimes it's, it's not enough to just say something right on the nose. You know, you have to try to, uh, use your own story to connect with the universality of a concept. Um, I, so I think, you know, when it comes to being raw and being vulnerable, is it's you know it's necessary, uh, necessary to be honest. That is, um, I think kind of an interesting concept right along with that is when you are writing a song. Um, one of my uh, one of my songwriting heroes. I actually got a chance to meet him over the summer, uh, Chris Thiele. He's in the folk world, but he's, you know, MacArthur uh, genius fellow, like all these things go on and on with credentials, but he, he's amazing. And he, he said to me when I asked him during our short conversation, he said, um, you know, the best songwriters uh, leave the last 10% of the song up to the audience. You don't, you have to write in such a way that you're, you're not so specific that you leave all chance for the audience to write their own story into your song. Um, so I think that's the best uh, way to write a vulnerable, honest song is you can be specific so it's meaningful, but you have to leave room in the story to allow anyone listening to insert their own experience into your attempt at communicating the general human experience. I, I, I kind of got a little in the weeds there, but um, you know, yeah, I mean, it's a great question. That's a good question. That's awesome. Um, yeah, I was reading and we talked about this at the March. No, we, we're in, yeah, March. We're in April now. And in the March Art of Songwriting um, session, we were talking about Sia and mm. um, she was writing, she was writing a song for Rihanna and she began to write and she had this concept of swinging from the chandelier. And um, as she began to write it, she used that concept to deal with her addiction struggle. You know, she was addicted to alcohol. And, and so in that process of writing that song, she decided like, this song is too personal. I can't give this to Rihanna. Mm -hmm. And she kept it for herself. And it just, you know, introduced her to the world because people didn't know that she was really also an artist, you know, they just knew her as a songwriter. Um, so Danesha, tell us a little bit about your thoughts about being transparent in your lyric. 
Yeah, um, well, everything that Luke said, definitely agree. Um, kind of like he took the words out of my mouth. Um, but I do think it is necessary um, to be raw, but not too raw, like he said. Um, like there's a quote, actually, I have on like one of my favorite shirts and on the back it says, uh, music is what feelings sound like. Um, yeah, nice. So, and also there's another one that says, um, like when words fail, music speaks. Mm -hmm. um, so, again, I always like, I can talk about music all day. Um, but you know, like I said, music really connects us. So I think when, when writing is very essential to be raw, um, and very authentic. Um, but like Lou said also just to leave a little, you know, leg room for the audience to, to, um, you know, interpret it in their own way, as well as incorporate their experience in their own way. Um, but not only through words i don't play any instruments i really wish i did oh my god that's like my dream to play <laughs> me <real> too <laughs> um, <laughs> but um a lot of times when i'm writing i also listen for different instruments because that's where a lot of my melodies come from um and that's where a lot of feeling i think comes from like i can hear a piano like a certain i don't know line of a piano and literally like just cry just from the feeling that it gives so I, when I am writing, I do try to like match that. Not that I want people to cry, but you know, try to match that emotion. Like I want my words to give someone this emotion, whether it be to, you know, empower themselves, whether it be to just say, listen, you have to cry tonight, just, you know, get it out and move on type of thing. But um, I think it is very essential to be authentic and well, just so you can connect, you know, you connect to that story, but other people will connect to you through, you know, your story. So. Awesome, thank you for that. Um, we, we're wrapping up shortly. We have about nine minutes left. I have one, so, one um, question in the chat room that we want to address, but before we get to that question, Ronnie, did you want to share anything about transparency and lyric? Um, just to piggyback with uh, what Luke and Danasia says, um, it's just very important to be vulnerable when you're writing and when you're conveying the message and the lyrics to the song that you're performing. And when I think about the vulnerability and the sound, um, Ed Sheeran come to mind, and I'm a huge Ed Sheeran fan. Oh my goodness, I love every song that he's ever come out with. He is so connecting. He is such, yeah, that's my, my, my guy. Um, he is so vulnerable. He's so edgy. He is so melodic. He is, his storytelling is absolutely amazing. Um, and when I listen to his voice, it's just so soulful. It's very, um, it's very raw. It's very raw. So it's imperative that whenever you sing a song and you write a song, that it connects other people to what you're feeling. And I think that's, that's very important. When a person hears a song, you connect with them. And when you do that, you can feel it even more so. Um, so he comes to mind definitely when you're talking about rawness, edginess, vulnerability. Um, yeah, definitely. Mm. Awesome. Thank you. Okay, so um, this is going to be for everybody. Um, what do you do when you run out of ideas? How Take do a break. you get inspired? Good one. Take a break. <laughs> okay. Yeah. yeah. I, no, I, I agree. My, um, my breaks, what I will kind of do to force myself is like go consume other good forms of art. Maybe it's, you know, just getting away from music for a while. <laughs> Um, I think I, I mentioned this at the beginning, just, you know, go watch a good film, go watch a, or go, I don't know, go for a run, go, you know, something like that. Mm -hmm. I mean, the other side of it, you could take it the complete opposite direction, which sometimes this works for me is just, uh, just let's say, you know, it's a, it's a new day and I'm out of a writing session plan, but I just cannot think of anything. Just start, like just start doing it and just force yourself to sit there um, I don't know if have, has that worked for any, you know, Danesia or Ronnie, has that worked for you guys? Just kind of getting in that zone and then, you know, 20, 30 minutes later, it clicks. Uh, sometimes it's helped to just keep going. Uh, a lot of times I like to just take a break just to give my mm. mind a break. Um, yeah. like you said, just do something to get my mind completely off of it because I can, you know, go take a shower, go for a run or cook something. And then the mm. idea may come to me then, you know, um, so just giving myself that that break that I may need, whether it be fresh air, you know, I like to take mm. break, type breaks usually if I run out of ideas. Ronnie, what, what do you do when you're running out of ideas? 
Um, I definitely take a break, Maria. Um, it's okay to take a break because there are going to be times when you are going to run into like a pause, a mental break, you know, a mental pause um, when you're writing. Um, sometimes the creative flow is not going to be there. Um, and it's okay to step away from the board, to step away from the guitar, step away from whatever instrument you're playing, you know, take a walk, come back to it and just see, you know, how you feel after the fact. And sometimes it may not come across that day. Sometimes you're not able to convey everything that you want to convey on that day. Sometimes it may happen tomorrow, the following day or next week. I remember uh, rewriting a song three times. Three times I rewrote a song um, because the first time I'm like, something is off. Something is still not gelling. The second time it gotten much better. The last time I said, I love it. So nowadays, when I, whenever I write a song, I want to make sure I love it. I want to make sure I feel it. I want to make sure that it resonates and I want to make sure that it's something that I'm okay with. So I'll tell anybody, you know, when you're writing, you want that um, outcome. You definitely want that outcome. Mm. I, I don't know. It, it kind of feels for me when I write is like, I need to get a song to a certain point and it's like just an internal thing. I'll know when it's time to give it a break. Like maybe it's, you got to get that first verse in the chorus and then maybe that's enough. And then take, take a step back and let the second verse come when it comes. Um, but yeah, I think that's, that's good advice, Ronnie. Also, yeah. I heard Nicole mention uh, in the chat, Nicole mentioned um, Questlove's book or not book mentioned Questlove talking about writer's block, not being real, um, which I read his book, I guess, six months ago. I think it was called creative quest or something like that. Um, but if anybody's looking for some good creative inspiration, uh, that was a great book. So I just thought I'd shout that out. Nice. Yeah. And, and sometimes, you know, maybe to, to your point, it, sometimes your part is just enough. Maybe that's when you bring in another writer because another writer will bring a different element to the mm. song that maybe just wasn't there for you. Maybe your part was just to write the hook or maybe, you know, you just write the verse. Um, but also to Ronnie's point, um, sometimes you do have to take that break because your mental condition one day is going to be different than the next day, right? So mm. you might see something Absolutely. a little bit different the next day or, you know, your environment is going to add to that to what you're feeling and what you're experiencing. So, mm. you know, hopefully that Absolutely. helps you guys. Um, okay, we have one other question here in the chat room. Uh, do you have any advice for connecting with producers? Um, so maybe Ronnie, you can take that one. What's your advice if you're a songwriter and you wanna connect with producers, what would be the way to can I find them first of all? How do you find a producer and connect with them? Well, finding them, um, there's so many different outlets you can use. You can go online, word of mouth, ask around colleges, uh, chorus, uh, people who are in chorus. Um, I just happen to be blessed to know them. You know, the producers, mainly all the producers that I've known um, that I've had the opportunity to work with, it was word of mouth. It was really word of mouth. I didn't really have to reach out to anybody. Um, for the most part, they reached out to me um, because I was kind of active at that time. So because of that, it opened up a lot of doors for different producers to come, you know, and work with me or I experienced working with them. Um, but I would say, you know, ask around, ask around um, and, and just be proactive with it and be active when it comes to your, your creative uh, stuff you know when it comes to writing so i would definitely just you know be creative with that mm. yeah i um awesome. just to jump in um i think social media now is like huge uh for this generation so that's kind of like a a way you know to use like i said the app voicey um there's different producers up there um so literally most of them they'll put their instagram in there but most of the time their their uh voicey profile matches their instagram so what I've been doing is just literally searching them on Instagram and sending them a message. Um, you know, I mean, the worst that could happen is they just won't reply. But they just exactly. <laughs> um, but I think literally just using social media 
um, as your like outlet to, to get to who you want or to try to get those type of connections. Um, I think utilizing social media right now is like huge, whether it be Twitter, Facebook, well, Twitter and Instagram mainly, but I think those are huge. Mm. Yeah. Do you want right, to start anything? Just to add that, I'm sorry. Definitely promote yourself. If it's something that you really, really want to do and you're passionate about, promote yourself. And trust me, people will find you as well. Awesome. Yeah, absolutely. Luke, um, did you, do you have any ideas of connecting? I mean, I, I you, think, go ahead. I, was just saying, I think Ronnie and Janasia summed it up. I, yeah, you kind of, you just got to do it yourself. Like there's no, mm -hmm. there's no rules and nobody's going to really do it for you. Um, so you just kind of just get out there and, and kind of what Ronnie just said also is just start putting stuff out there too. Um, mm -hmm. You know, don't be afraid of, well, you, you kind of have to not be afraid of anything if you want to do the music game, <laughs> even though we all are anyway, but uh, yeah. You just got to put stuff out there. Just, just yeah. do it. Just create, just make stuff. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Uh, there's a question in there's the chat. A, oh, I was going to say. Okay, go ahead. You read <laughs> it for us. Um, so it's from Fabri. It says, what's one thing that an inspiring songwriter can do daily? Um, I mean, it probably will sound cliche, but write. Just literally write. <laughs> <every Yep>. day. <laughs> um, <laughs> just keep writing. Um, I kind of think of it as like, um, you know, a plant or like watering something that you want to grow. Mm. It can't grow if you don't nurture it, you know? So if you want to be a songwriter, if you want to be a musician, you have to nurture that craft to, you know, enhance it. So if you want to be a songwriter, keep writing. If you want to be, you know, if you want to learn how to play the piano, and I'm speaking to myself as well as everybody in the chat, mm -hmm. um, you know, take lessons or, you know, go on, like I said, social media and YouTube is like essential now because you can go on YouTube and learn how to play the guitar and, you know, learn the piano. Um, so literally just writing. You want to be a songwriter, just write. Mm. That's my advice. Anybody else want to chime in? I'll say, um, I think there's, there's like a, for, for aspiring songwriters, for new songwriters, there's like this aura around writing music. Like, do I have the, you know, the right, to start writing music you kind of look at it like this this thing that's out there um but just want to assure you if there's anybody here like that like you have a voice that's unique that nobody else has and you need to write music you, you got to do it like there's nobody else that can write your story um and your story has something unique that nobody else has um so do it you just yeah start doing it make it a habit get in a rhythm of it um you do it one day you do it the next day and every single day that you keep writing uh you get better but also it gets easier to keep the rhythm going yeah just be consistent please that's all yep. i can say is just be consistent with it ronnie do you have any final thoughts on with that i would say just to piggyback on what they both said um continue to write hone your craft focus on what you want to write about come up with the storylines come up with um a great mm. hook come up with great lyrics in, in general, um, and just do it consistently, consistently enough to just go ahead and, um, and focus on it. You know, mm -hmm. focus on what you're doing, really, really want to do it, and um, just keep doing it every single day, every day. And also just to, um, last thing, sorry. Um, you know, I know sometimes it may be discouraging, but don't, don't stop. Like, right. keep going. Mm -hmm. um, I know Luke mentioned like the songs that he wrote maybe 10, 15 years ago. He probably, you know, he said he listens to them now and is like, what? You know, but <laughs> you keep going, you progress, you get better. Um, yeah. So don't, don't get, don't give up. Just keep going, keep writing, keep singing, whatever it is musically you're doing, just keep doing it, keep at it. You'll get better and, you know, eventually your dream will come true. Absolutely. Amen. Amen to that. So my friends, we have come to the end of this time together. And I just, I love everything you guys have said. Um, for those of you that are listening or those that are going to listen to us on the replay, um, we just want to encourage you to, to do this very thing that all of these amazing artists have said, like get to work. There's things that need to be said, right? Mm -hmm. There's emotions that you're experiencing 
that people need to hear. We all have a different perspective of how we see things. And so there's plenty of room in the world to have more songs written. And maybe you need to write the song that's going to help someone not commit suicide or Absolutely. someone not to, you know, not to give up hope and end a relationship or restore a relationship. Maybe this is a time when you can begin to write things that are going to help so many people. And so we all have a, a, what do you call that? A sphere of influence that we can all touch. And so mm -hmm. we want to just encourage you guys to just write to, you know, and to Luke's point, consume art, watch and observe and listen, use your senses, pick up on other things that are happening around you and then put that, put that into something and um, allow that to bring healing to yourself and allow that to bring healing to others as well. Um, so, okay, we have, oh, thank you. Thank you, Nicole, for that. Um, thank you, Cynthia. Never give up because you're going to get better. And if there's any ideas, um, those of you that are listening to us, other topics that you want us to cover in future, um, we do this every month, once a month. It's the first Friday of each month. And so other topics that we can help with, please let us know. Let me know. You have my email. It's maria.riverajones at gmail.com. It's a long email. I'm trying to shorten it. Um, <laughs> but, before, <laughs> but before we go, I want everyone to share their social media handles so that we can have uh, our panel, our attendees follow you guys and watch your journey as you grow. So, Danasia, what's how can we find you on social media? So, um, my Instagram name is the with two e, so it's T H E E Songbird, um, S O N S O N G B I R D underscore. Um, so, you guys can follow me there again, the Songbird with two e's and underscore. I can just type it like Lucy. Yeah, would make yeah, sense. that's <laughs> awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, Ronnie. Tell us. You, you type yours. I'm going to type mine too. Okay, let's see here. Yeah. I'm on my phone now, by the way. Sorry about earlier. Oh, okay. Horrible. It's okay. We got you, though. Okay, so I'll just say um, verbally. I'll say verbally. Um, it's Ronnie underscore Kens, R O N I underscore K E N Z as in zebra. So it's Ronnie underscore Kens. All right. If somebody can type that, my nails are too long, and so like I do too many typos. I'm yeah, trying to preserve them. <laughs> Thank yeah. you so um, much. Thanks, um, Nick. If you guys have any other questions, um, I know for myself, you can reach out to me on my Instagram, um, or even if you guys, you know, want to collab on something or anything, you know, just reach out. Yeah, I was gonna say the same thing. I type my Instagram up there, Luke, the letter B, letter E, and then Roland, R O W, L A N D. Um, yeah, re reach out. Would be would love to chat more. Even just want to chat songwriting or anything. Chat music, be a lot of fun. Yeah, yeah. I'm putting in my Instagram here. Hopefully, I can type it right. Second gen <laughs> music, and I want you guys that are watching and listening, please follow these artists. What can we expect from you guys in the next six months? Let's commit to something here. What What can we expect from you? New music. <laughs> um. I know for me, uh, it has been a goal for like maybe two, three years now to actually put out a single or an EP. So I am really dedicating myself to doing that by summer. Um, so stay tuned, guys. Hold me accountable. <laughs> <laughs> we will. We will. <laughs> Go ahead, uh, Luke. Yeah, I've been in the studio the last couple months um, working on a four song EP. So that'll be coming out. It was supposed to come out kind of now-ish, but the isolation stuff here it kind of threw us off our, our track. So um, I'm hoping by sometime in May, if we can, uh, get back together and get in the studio. Um, and then we'll be, uh, we'll be booking some, some, uh, some gigs around New Jersey, New York City area. So yeah, stay tuned. Awesome. All right, mm. Ronnie. Yeah, well, actually, I'm looking to work with Danasia on her EP or single. <laughs> So, Nay, I'm here for you, girl. <laughs> Thank you, Kelly. <Kenny>. Absolutely. <laughs> and I think you guys might all see a little something from the four of us because 
I, I love these guys. I feel like I've known them now forever. And I just look forward to, to just collaborating with you guys and doing more. Yeah, let's um, do it. Offering Absolutely. more, teaching more. Actually, Luke is going to be on, on a song. That's how I met Luke, um, through a friend of a friend. And uh, he's going to be doing some vocals for a song that we wrote. So um, I don't know. That'll be Yeah, it's going to be fun. Soon. Looking forward to it. <laughs> and one more thing, Maria, I would like to also, I know you had um, put the actual flyer. Um, but if anyone wants to check out the single Rain, you can go on YouTube, go to Rain, go to Ronnie Ken's and Rain, R-A-I-N. And that's one of the songs that I've uh, written. It's an original song that I've done and recorded. And it's a great song, y'all. So you have to listen to it. So we were a little bit on overtime. Thank you guys that stuck around and listened to us. Um, we bless you and keep, um, keep in touch with us. We want to be able to be a resource to you guys, help you connect mm -hmm. with others um, and, you know, help teach what we know so please stay in touch and i thank you guys for being here with me tonight on a friday and <laughs> this is really special i'm sorry we couldn't do it in person but hey this is the next best thing so absolutely thank you so much for having me thank, thank you, you guys maria. Thank yeah you. thanks so much maria thanks for all your work putting this together oh my pleasure it's my pleasure and blessings to everybody and uh yeah let's stay in touch Thank you. Have a good night, everybody. Stay safe, Thank everybody. you. Good night. Thank you. Bye.